So I've been working on a game with destructible tiles in Godot and I've been trying to figure out how to make it more fun. The answer is obviously explosions. But if you try to use something like an area 2D for the explosion, you'll quickly figure out that there's no way to actually tell which tiles are within the explosion radius. So I did some searching and I figured out a way to do it and I'll be sharing it with you today. One game with destructible tiles and explosions that comes to mind is Minecraft. And the way that Minecraft does it is with raycasts. The math is more complicated for 3D, uh, but the basic idea is the same. If you want to implement this in 3D, I will post a link to where I found this information. But essentially, we will be spawning raycasts that go out to the radius of our explosion and do damage to everything they interact with. So let's say we have an explosion. Uh, we spawn the raycasts, and once they collide with the tiles, from the collision point and the collision normal, we can figure out which specific tile we're colliding with. I go more in detail on this in my destructible tiles video, which I will also link in the description. But essentially, we can keep destroying tiles this way until we reach the edges of the radius of the explosion. We can also add a strength variable to these raycasts, which will allow us to simulate objects absorbing the explosion and not letting it pass through once it destroys enough tiles. You can see this illustrated in these two clips. In the first video, the raycasts have less strength, so each explosion can destroy less tiles. But in the second clip, the explosion radius is exactly the same, except the raycasts have a higher strength counter. So let's see how this is implemented. Our explosion ray is just a raycast with a timer that will um, destroy it automatically after two seconds. In the physics process, we get the collider, which we're colliding with. Um, make sure that our raycast is initialized, that it's, it has its cast to position uh, from our rocket, uh, which spawns it initially, uh, and it has its position. And we make sure that the collider is not null. If the collider is not null and it's an enemy, we, we just call our damage function on the enemy and set the collision mask for our enemy and player layer to false because we don't we don't want the we don't want the raycast doing too much damage to the enemies themselves this won't affect our tile map collision mask so it will i won't keep doing damage to tiles if the collider is a tile map we get a cell position uh, which we calculated calculate by getting the collision point of the of the ray minus the collision normal. This basically makes sure that the x and y coordinates uh, that we are passing are actually inside the tau, uh, because if we just pass this, uh, pass at the collision point, it will be on the edge of the tau. We get the tau ID, which is the unique identifier of the tau type uh, that is in that cell, and we progressively destroy it more and more um, depending on how many collisions there are. So there are th three different frames for the destruction of this specific tile. Uh, we change it to the more destroyed variant with every collision with an explosion ray. After, after this, if we have a collider again, we decrement the strength of the, of the raycast. And if the strength is less than zero, we queue free the raycast. So this is the, this is the functionality that you saw earlier where our raycasts have a large radius, but they're not actually getting there because there's too many tiles in the way. In this, in this case, the strength is three and they actually can get, can get to the edge the edge of the radius but with this strength that you can pretty much destroy all of the tiles and the reason why that is is because we're spawning about 200 raycasts and there's just not enough tiles just to stop this amount of raycasts so in our in our rocket um this is this is what spawns our explosion itself when we are collided with something we spawn rays and um as you can see we have our radius and our raycast constants um, over here, which we'll, we will use for, for the spawning of the rays. Um, raycast is just the amount of raycasts that we spawn. So we define variable i and variable rotation. And while i is less than raycast, we set the rotation to um, i times 360 
uh, degrees divided by the number of raycasts we're spawning. So this will ensure that the raycasts are spawned evenly. Uh, then we convert this to radians because our uh, cosine and sine functions take radians. We instantiate uh, an explosion ray um, and initialize it with the cast 2 vector which is cosine of rotation and sine of rotation which just gives us a unit vector pointing in um, this rotational direction and multiply it by the radius then we pass it. Our position because we want to spawn it um, inside the game itself. We don't want to spawn it inside the rocket, rocket because our explosion ray actually needs uh, the tile map which it gets from the game itself in order to figure out which tile we are colliding with. Once we do this, we get the parent which is the game node itself and um, a child. We increment i and do this for 200 times. In this case, we could change this up. We could do less, we could do more. Let's see how this looks with collision shapes enabled. As you can see, we're spawning a bunch of raycasts and they're destroyed after 0.2 seconds. There are some raycasts that are destroyed before that because they are colliding with way too many tiles and uh, they aren't able to destroy all of them. So uh, we could increase the strength. I believe they're not actually destroying all of the tiles that are there. Um, we could increase the strength until we're not actually destroying all the raycasts. Um, so with ten, strength 10, we should not be despawning any of the raycasts and they should be destroying everything in their way, basically. This is how you implement Minecraft-like or Terraria-like explosions in your Godot 3.2 game. Hopefully this was informative. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.